So in my previous career, um, I was able to obtain these great boxes that are compartmentalized because they carry pagers. And so I use it to store my competition stones. And so let's take a look at this box of competition stones. Let's go through these and I'll describe and get better close-ups on them. Okay, so here's a, uh, a nice little Brazilian agate and uh, it actually has a sister to go with it. Of course, it's got fingerprints all over it, sorry about that. but. These will go at opposite ends of the case to kind of frame whatever I decide to put in the middle. They will then be followed by these, I don't know what you want to call them, bear claw or whatever, pair of uh, Brazilian agate as well. And uh, Again, they will be opposite sides of the case, kind of framing the middle. Got some dirt on there. I'm going to clean these off once I put them in the case. And here's a really nice Montana agate. Now these all have pins in them, so that's why I'm being careful. Now I did a, a video on framing a while back, and uh, this would be a good example of framing where I have a central feature of the stone, and then I'm using this outer edge to kind of frame the, uh, the center feature. There is one of two centerpieces. Again, a Brazilian agate. Nice flame. And here would be the other one. Again, a nice central feature with agate bands going around and framing the central feature. Now, here's, a, here's another piece of Brazilian agate, and this is what's basically started the whole um, pattern of the shield with six sides. And this is my little angel, for lack of a better term. Um, and this actually got me a small little write-up in Rock and Gem magazine. Here's another piece of, this is actually gem grade Brazilian agate, because it's good enough that, uh, this could be made into a really nice piece of jewelry. Now we get into some other. This is a teardrop of um, Tennessee agate with some plume in there, which I've been told is a pretty rare thing. So I'm pretty happy about that. And I'm not doing just agate. So here is a nice piece of, they call it Ochoco Rim Jasper or Bat Cave Jasper. And because of the way this Jasper forms, uh, it's dark layers getting progressively lighter. And so there's pretty much uh, inherent framing within the piece, no matter which one, no matter what shape you choose.
And here is a, a nice piece of Wonderstone or Rhyolite. Um, it actually took a decent polish. Most of it doesn't, but this one actually did. There's a, a extremely large high dome of petrified wood from Arizona. Yes, even though petrified wood is not one of my favorites, I do actually cut it once in a while. Here's a nice, another nice piece of petrified wood. Um, can't tell you the location. Maybe Sweet Home, maybe... Uh, I doubt that it's Saddle Mountain, Washington, though. There's another piece of petrified wood. Again, what I'm what I'm looking for is, uh, you know, it's got to be a flawless polish, nice rounded edges. Even though there's you know a couple of spots here on the bottom, that's actually part of the stone. There's no, it's not um, a blemish or anything like that. Now uh, this piece of wood is actually from Saddle Mountain. It's a fairly th thick dome, not as thick as the other one, but I just thought it had some really nice patterns in it. Now you might think this is uh, Montana agate with the dendrite in there, but it's actually a piece of Brazilian agate and just a, a gorgeous little dendrite. Now here is a, a piece of Montana agate and I believe they call it Montana red because it's all carnelian and red. Another one of the shield patterns. Now we're going to get into... Oh, I have another piece of uh, petrified wood. This is from the um, Arizona wood area. Again, all, all of the legal area, not the national park. And now we're going to get into a little bit of uh, Jasper. This is Bruno Jasper from Idaho. What most people don't realize is these are actually Thunder Eggs. But by the time people see the, the Bruno it's, or the Jasper, it's been broken out of it. Here's a nice colorful piece of uh, Rocky Butte picture jasper. I don't think this is Biggs. Um, maybe Deschutes. But definitely another one of the Oregon picture jaspers. Here's a nice little piece of Owyhee jasper. Again, using the the brownish tan color to frame the central piece, and just going with the overall shape of the stone that it started with. And here's a nice dark piece of Imperial Jasper. I believe this is out of Mexico. This was actually out of a huge slab. 
So the bands are really large and, and actually kind of hard to work with, but this one turned out okay. Now, most of the time, uh, Mexican Crazy Lace has band banding that is soft and hard, but this little starburst here is actually um, good and solid, and so does qualify as a, uh, a competition grade stone because there's no flaws in the surface of the stone. This one is out of Central Oregon uh, called Polka Dot Agate. And as you can see, it's got lots of polka dots in there. I don't know if you can see those very well, but they're there. Now the thing about this is sometimes the polka dot is a different material and softer. Fortunately, this one is good. And in the same location, they have a, a relatively light blue, clear shagget that they call um, ice blue. Blue ice or ice blue, I can't recall. But you can see there's spots in there, the polka dot as well. And uh, it's the same pit, just a different location within the pit. And now we're going to get into a little bit of rainbow obsidian and hopefully you can see the refractions in there. This one would be referred to as um, Velvet Rainbow. Hopefully you can see the swirly green and purple in there. Yeah, this is uh, also um, Rainbow Obsidian. This is from Mexico and let's see if I can get the angle just right. You can see just vivid, vivid I don't know, is that fuchsia purple? <laughs> And then this one is dark green. Hopefully you can see the modeled surface in there. And one more. This is electric blue. As you can see, it's got a nice blue tint to it. And I did a a bolo tie out of this material uh, in a previous video and the, the, the thing about it is you have to get the you have to cut through a very specific layer within normal rainbow obsidian and just peel out the the one layer of blue and I believe that's everything in the box I hope you enjoyed this uh, this look at competition stones. I plan to be putting these on display this this coming weekend at the Rick Real show. Um, I've also been asked to be a guest speaker there about cutting cabochons and uh, if you happen to be in the area of Salem then come out and say hi. I will be uh, there on Saturday, April 15th at 2 p.m. Uh, doing the discussion about cabochons.
Thank you and possibly see you at the show.